Scotland against Fries this weekend, folks. Rugby World Cup warm-up games are really getting underway thick and fast this weekend, and one of them sees the Scots host the French at Murrayfield. I feel like the the French haven't quite been as dominant over the Scots as they have some of the other teams in recent years. We will go through the squads, the recent history, some predictions and whatnot, and you guys can let us know your thoughts. But as I said, like 2-3, to three, that's still a negative record for the Scots, but it's not too bad. They won at Murrayfield in 2020, and they won over in France in 2021. How many teams have got away wins in France since Fabien Galtier took over? I feel like it's pretty few and far between. Is that the only one? It can't be many. But the Scots are one of the teams who's done it. So, uh, it's only a World Cup warm-up game. I say only. It is still a big test match. There's still a lot on the line in terms of guys fighting for World Cup places. So, it still should be a pretty big matchup. But, uh, yeah, I look forward because... The French have picked a few young guys, and the Scots, who did play last week against Italy, have kind of reverted, I feel like, to more of what is going to look like their proper, if I can call it proper, World Cup team. We will start with the Scots, the fifth ranked side in the world. They've gone with Schoolman, Ashman, and Fagerson as their front row, and these guys will need to, to be physically up for it, because, I mean, Gregor Townsend mentioned it itself in his kind of pre-match uh, press conference that, um, yeah, that the French have a big-time power game, so... If you get dominated up front, you're going to be having a, uh, a hard time with things. So, Ferguson especially will need to keep an eye on his penalty count. But um, Schumann, he's a big unit. So, if they can prop up the scrum, kind of keep a stable platform for the rest of the team, I think that will be one step into a positive performance for the Scots. Richie Grant, Grant Gilchrist also come into the squad after not playing last week. So, it's an all-new Type 5, the only forward that remains from last week's game is Matt Fagerson, who shifts positions to number 6. He's alongside Hamish Watson, who is the tackling machine, and the uh, dangerous ball carrier Jack Dempsey at number 8. So, I mean, to be honest, of those three guys, I mean, Matt Fagerson in recent times has kind of been the most impressive of the Scottish guys. His work rate in the last Six Nations was unbelievable. So, you'd have to like the look of that Scottish forward pack, I would say. I mean... Nobody's really put a claim on the hooker jersey. It's like four or five guys who've rotated through. Um, but it's this time it's Ashman's turn to have a crack. He's potentially, is he the best ball carrier of the lot? But yeah, I think you'd like the look of that four pack if you're a Scottish fan. Ben White and Finn Russell are 9 and 10. And interesting, Finn Russell is captain. So I remember Stuart Hogg retired, former captain. And uh, Jamie Ritchie seems to have a little bit of a niggling injury. So he is also out. So Finn Russell is captain in the absence of those two guys. And, I mean, him and Ben White, that's a pretty nice, like, attacking 19 combo. I mean, the fact that Ben White has pretty much put Ali Price out of a job, who went on the Lions tour not that long ago as one of the premier number nines in the world, I guess speaks to the value of what he's bringing to the team. He's a real, real live wire. So I look forward to seeing what those guys can do together. And then Tu Pulotu and Hugh Jones continue their midfield partnership at 12 and 13. Um, they seem to have a kind of telepathic... Uh, understanding between each other in that midfield. So that is, um, I mean, that's gold. I mean, I remember as soon as it was um, Martin Onu and, uh, and Conrad Smith for New Zealand. I'm not saying Sione Tupolotto and Hugh Jones are Martin Onu and Conrad Smith, but I'm just saying that midfield being so well connected, man, it's, it's just worth its weight in gold, isn't it? And then uh, Big Duhan and uh, Little Darcy are uh, your wingers. Both of them <laughs> equally dangerous attacking threats. I mean, Darcy Graham got two tries. Uh, in the game against the Italians, both of them love to break tackles different ways, but uh, they're both really, really dangerous wiggers. And then Blair Kinghorn is your man at fullback, which is still the position I prefer to see him play. But what do I know? So, yeah, it's a pretty good-looking Scottish team, man. Very much changed. So we may not quite see the same cohesion levels, although Gregor Tanta did mention that this group's been training together, even if they didn't play last week. So he's hoping that they will have some kind of cohesion carry forth. Uh, Dave Cherry, Jamie Batty, VPNL, that's your forward replacements in the front row. Scott Cummings and Rory Darge, who started last week, dropped down to the bench. Darge made like 17 tackles or something stupid. He is another one who just loves to get involved. I mean, he's going to be putting the pressure on Hamish Watson, isn't he? George Horn, Cameron Redpath, and Ollie Smith, uh, your back replacements. So, yeah, uh, it's an all, almost an all-change team from the team that played last week, so it's Kind of hard to read too much into what we saw. But um, overall, a lot of the big gun Scottish players are in action. So I think you would have to be pretty pleased. For France, changes. Changes, changes, changes. In some cases, it's guys in their first game for France. And in some cases, it's guys who we didn't see for France in the Six Nations or haven't seen for quite some time. So Jean-Baptiste Gros, he is going to be 
there alongside Bugari and Bamba in the front row. I don't think any of those guys played in the Six Nations, so it's essentially a, uh, a much-changed front row, if you can call it that, from a competition which was at the start of the year. But all of these guys international caps, and uh, I mean, they're going to be under selection pressure to put their hands up because, boy, that French squad is competitive. Uh, Woki and Shularu are the locks. Now, Woki didn't play in the Six Nations. I think he missed pretty much the entire competition injured. Goodness gracious me, there's some birds having a chatter on my roof. And uh, the big unit that is Shularu uh, is alongside him. He did get some game time. But he is still relatively inexperienced in the international scene, but certainly one of the senior guys, like in his 30s, and that squad counts as, as pretty old because Fabien Galtier likes to pick the guys who are um, the kind of up-and-coming guys, doesn't he? Uh, Boudouin is the, um, the other, well, one of the first debutants in the squad at number six. Uh, we've seen him playing a lot for, for La Rochelle. He seems like a real hard work rate player from every time I've seen him play. Never looked out of place in a team which is pretty bloody successful so um yeah we'll see if he can do the same at international level makalu and tonga are seven and eight so tonga i don't think we've seen him well when was it tour of japan have we seen him since then i remember when we saw him play for france he looked very very dangerous in terms of his ball carrying and uh, makalu is that guy who can literally cover the backs or the forwards so it's good to see him get a start because in recent times he has mainly been on the bench uh kuyu and jelly bear that's your 9 10 combo so it's uh clearly not what we assume will be france's dupont and intermark 9 10 combo come the world cup but i mean kuyu and jelly bear pretty tidy guys to have as your replacements and then uh, moifana and gaitan are 12 and 13 so million gaitan the 20 year old from he's from po right Try scoring records, pretty impressive from what I understand it. He'll be getting his first cap, so congratulations to him. Dumotier, who made that left wing spot look pretty comfortable, still remains there on the left. And then uh, this other 20-year-old, Louis Bielberry, is, uh, is your right winger. So another 20-year-old. That's what I'm talking about, how uh, Galtier just loves to blood these youngsters. I think he scored a few tries for Bordeaux. This season just gone as well. And then the veteran, in the scheme of things, Brice Doulon is there at fullback. Fullback for France is a really insanely competitive position as well. We haven't seen Doulon play there for quite some time. But man, like there's been people calling for his return for a long time because he has just been uh, proper dangerous. Bench-wise, Malvaka, Wardi, and Falatea. So that's pretty same-same. The big man mountain that is Paul Willems are there as well. Caton. Uh, is the other forward replacement, and it's three backs with Saran, Astoy, and Vincent. I don't think we've seen Vincent play for quite some time for France either, have we? Remember, he had a huge period out injured, so yeah, it is maybe not the quite most familiar French side that we are used to seeing, but having looked at a bunch of the squads that are playing this weekend, the French squad is kind of in line with a lot of the teams who are playing their first game. The Scots are a bit different because it's their second but a lot of the teams who played their, are playing their first week are playing some guys on their first game or some less kind of familiar names as some of the big guns are not quite back in action just yet. And as I said, the French are no different. But um, yeah, across these last five games, which is not quite an even split because there's no draw in there, but 26-22 to the French. So it's not been hugely lopsided in terms of the score lines. It's genuinely been pretty good contests. Last contest between these two teams was six nations this year in france so 32 21 red cards each way in that game france had a big lead 19 nil and the scots did genuinely well to come back into it and the french just kind of took it away from them at the death um it was like with only five minutes to go there was still only one score in it so yeah it, it could be a pretty interesting game this one murrayfield 315 kickoff over there uh in the afternoon which i think is 2 15 over here for us in new zealand in the morning which is pretty bloody awful but either live or delayed i will find a way to watch this one um ben o'keefe is the ref with the kiwi connection he does speak a decent amount of french so fingers crossed communications between the players and the referee go smoothly enough uh predictions wise the scots are actually the favorites with the bookies by three points but the rugby forecast algorithm goes the other way with the French by two. If you want any Scottish or French Rugby World Cup gear, check out Lovell Rugby down in the description. They've got both countries' Rugby World Cup outfits. 
which are both looking pretty sharp. But um, yeah, you guys let us know your thoughts. France, number three side in the world who can retake number two with an away win at Murrayfield. Or do you think Scotland naming what seems to be a kind of more stable first team squad? Do you think they're going to get the job done? You guys let us know your thoughts and um, yeah, I'll talk to you guys again soon. See you later.